Welcome to the Cricket Australia Virtual Community Cricket Awards, where tonight we celebrate and recognise the amazing work of cricket volunteers from across the country in what has been, I'm sure you'll agree, a season like no other. My name's Pete Laser, an absolute pleasure to be your host for this evening. This week is also National Volunteer Week, so not only do we celebrate some amazing finalists tonight, we say thank you to the thousands of volunteers across the country who make cricket possible each and every week. As we move into the awards, I would firstly like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet tonight and are watching these awards and pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Warning to our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers, please be advised that this presentation may contain images, voices and names of deceased persons. The awards tonight are proudly supported by the Commonwealth Bank, who continue to invest in grassroots cricket, in particular initiatives that make cricket a sport for all. Let's hear from General Manager of Brand, Diane Everett. As proud partners of Cricket Australia for over 30 years and supporters of the women's team for the last 22, we're delighted to see how far the game has come. It's been our focus at Combank to get more girls playing cricket and with the help of our Growing Cricket for Girls Fund, we've created over 1,500 new teams. We truly believe that cricket is a sport for all, and we want cricket to be the most inclusive sport in Australia. We've already seen our game go from strength to strength and can't wait to see what the next generation can do. We would love to congratulate all of the nominees tonight and thank you for your commitment to community cricket and growing the game that we all love. First up for the evening, to officially open the awards, we welcome Chairman of Cricket Australia, Earl Eddings. Welcome everybody. On behalf of Australian Cricket, I'd love to welcome you to the Community Awards for 2021. What a year we've had with COVID and how it's decimated sports around Australia. We were able to get our season away. Thank you to the hardworking volunteers who have made that happen. Without your hard work and persistence over the last 12 months, cricket would have been for the worse. So I have enjoyed the night. Good luck and congratulations to all the winners. And thank you for your contribution to Australian Cricket. Thanks, Earl. As another season comes to a close, think back to just over 12 months ago when the world as we know it came to a sudden stop. Cricket finals were stopped, end of season functions cancelled or moved online, and we all went into the unknown world of lockdowns. Yet in spite of all of this, tonight we happily celebrate not only a full season of cricket that, let's be honest, we didn't know we were going to have, but the prevailing of sport and its ability to reconnect communities. Before we go forward, let's take a look back at the season that was 2020-2021. Welcome to the 2021 Virtual Community Cricket Awards, celebrating the season that was like no other. Despite a global pandemic, with the hard work of volunteers across the country, we saw over 130,000 games of cricket over 57,000 kids enjoying cricket blast programs, over 700,000 kids playing cricket in schools, over 42,000 registered coaches, over 5,000 accredited umpires, and over 1 million participants. There are over 30,307,000 runs scored, with over 214,700 sixes smashed, over 1,664,000 wickets taken, and 259,466 ducks. And whilst we saw people return to the field and play cricket, we also saw our community overcoming a season of uncertainty, showing resilience, reconnecting with each other and having fun, going the extra mile to ensure that cricket returned no matter what. Because we know that cricket is more than just a game. It's about the cricket community. Now to our first award. First up, we have the Indoor Facility of the Year Award. This award recognises an indoor facility that embraces the connection with the community and cricket to provide the best program experience to its participants. To introduce the finalists for this award and announce our first winner tonight, we welcome Melbourne Stars legend, Elise Villani. Over to you, Elise.
The nominees for Indoor Facility of the Year are Bouncer Indoor Sports Creating strong community links with local junior cricket clubs, Bouncer Indoor Sports has raised the profile of indoor cricket, encouraging everyone to play cricket all year round. And Newcastle Indoor Sports. Newcastle Indoor Sports has supported a wide range of cricket activities, including women's social cricket, school programs, junior cricket, and Woolworths Cricket Blast. And the winner is... Bouncer Indoor Sports. Thanks Elise, and congratulations to our first winner of the night, Bouncer Indoor Sports. A worthy winner, Bouncer Indoor Sports have not only created WA's first women's social indoor competition, they host one of WA's strongest junior competitions and proactively partner with local schools and cricket clubs to deliver accessible programs for all. Congratulations. Next up, we have the Community Cricket Coach of the Year. This award celebrates a coach who exemplifies coaching the Australian way. Someone who has gone out of their way to make sure that participants are supported to develop their skills and a lifelong love of cricket. To introduce our finalists for Community Coach of the Year, we welcome Australian Test cricketer Nathan Lyon to the screen. Over to you, Nathan. The nominees for the Community Coach of the Year are Mark McDonald from the Winston Hills Cricket Club. Using every available resource to him, Mark aims to create the best experience for all involved at his club. And Rob Ward from the Western Region Junior Cricket Association. Through online drills, seminars and quizzes, Rob ensured COVID restrictions did not hinder the development of over 60 representative girls at his club. And the winner is Mark McDonald. Mark, congratulations. You are our Community Coach of the Year. Thank you. That's unbelievable. That's awesome. I can't believe it. There's thousands of coaches, men and women all around Australia, and you have been named the Community Cricket Coach of the Year. I know you've only just found out, but, but how, what does that mean to you? How do you feel? Um, a bit stunned, actually. Um, not something I'd ever thought I'd um, achieve, but um, I guess, uh, yeah, pretty pretty stoked. How did you get into coaching? What was the what was the thing that made you want to get into career coaching? Um, I guess it was the the start of my um, my boys playing cricket um, back in under tens uh, six years ago. Um, I played cricket as a junior and. Uh, they uh, they started, and uh, I was one of a couple of dads who uh, who started coaching. My old man was my coach when I was in juniors, and he always talked about the frustrations of coaching his own son as well as the others. <laughs> How do you deal with the frustrations? How do you do it when you go back home? Uh, the boy, I think we've been doing it long enough. Um, the boys know when I'm coach and when I'm dad, um, and uh, the two get separated fairly well. One of the criteria for being our Community Cricket Coach of the Year is coaching the Australian way. What does coaching the Australian way mean to you? Uh, certainly giving everyone um, that you're coaching a, 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 an opportunity to, uh, to excel at what they do, um, you know, be it batting, bowling or fielding, that, that the players enjoy um, their experience on the cricket field. You've got a passion for upskilling yourself and others to create the best experience for your players. Why is it important to you? How do you go about upskilling both yourself as a coach and, and make sure your players are also getting better each and every time they play? Um, by doing further uh, further education, making use of uh, the, the cricket masterclasses um, and online education um, so that I'm constantly learning and, uh, you know, if I don't know more than what the players do, then I can't, they, they can't improve. Do you think that's helped grow your junior program? We know there's so many different sports, so many different opportunities, so many different things for juniors to do at the moment, but your junior program seems to be to be growing. Do you think this is this is a small part of it as well? 
Oh, look, definitely um, having coaches that are confident in what they do um, helps helps player retention. Uh, you know, at Winston Hills, we've gone from uh, from six junior teams to 22 junior teams in the space of about three seasons, um, which, uh, you know, and coaching um, and coach education is certainly part of that. What's next for you, Mum? I mean, you've just been named the Community Cricket Coach of the Year. How do you go back to pre-season training and next season with, you know, all the accolades that come with it? How, how do you feel being in charge now? Uh, yeah, look, it, it won't change me and what I do. Um, uh, yeah, I will still go about do the same way and uh, do the same things that we've been doing and continue to try and uh, um, bring the coach education at, our, at Winston Hills up even higher. We're now in, in May. When does the program get underway and, and how does season 2021-22, when does that get started and how does it look like from your point of view? Registration start 1st of July. Um, we'll do our grading um, sometime uh, in, uh, in, in August with, uh, with season to kick off um, more than likely mid-September as usual. Um, I guess the good thing about this season is we won't be... Uh, COVID affected like we have been. Let's hope that's absolutely true, mate. We are well and truly hoping we're, we're past that. Just in a, in a sentence or two, what's the best thing about coaching in your mind? Uh, just seeing the, the players that I, uh, th- that I coach grow, uh, grow up, not just as cricketers, but as uh, uh, good young men. Well, Mark, congratulations. You are our Community Cricket Coach of the Year for season 2020-2021. Well done. Thank you. What a way to start off our awards. Thank you, Mark, and congratulations once again. Our next award is the Inclusion and Diversity Initiative of the Year Award. This award looks to acknowledge the outstanding delivery of diverse and inclusive experiences by finding clever and innovative ways to engage and grow their offering. Let's hear who our top two finalists for the night are. Thanks, Elise. The nominees for Inclusion and Diversity Initiative of the Year are Bateman Junior Cricket Club. Dedicated to ensuring kids with a disability are given the chance to thrive in cricket, Bateman Junior Cricket Club offers a range of programs, mentoring and partnerships and the Southern District Magpies Cricket Club. The club's Junior Blast All Abilities Modified Program created a welcoming environment for many kids that were playing cricket for the very first time. And the winner is... Bateman Junior Cricket Club. Thanks Elise, and well done to the Bateman Junior Cricket Club who I know are celebrating at their club rooms watching the awards tonight. An incredible program, where through great partnerships and a whole of club approach, they continue to work hard to integrate their All Abilities program into the club, meaning their kids feel embraced and valued. Great work to all of those involved at the Bateman Junior Career Club. Congratulations. Our next award for the night is the Community Match Official of the Year. This award celebrates an umpire or match official who leads by example in championing safe, fair and enjoyable cricket for all. Tonight, we have two great nominees who do just that. Over to you, Elise, to tell us more about them and announce who the winner is. The nominees for Community Match Official of the Year are... Marcus Roses. Marcus created opportunities to play cricket and inclusive environments by driving community cricket carnivals in remote areas of the Northern Territory. And Glenn Pepper. Glenn ensured participating in cricket was enjoyable and fair to all by providing high quality cricket experiences. And the winner is... Marcus Roses. We actually have a little video of Marcus and the amazing work he does for cricket in the Northern Territory. Let's take a look. 22 years I came back and the, the vision of the two custodians from this council was to find the next Indigenous cricketer wear the baggy green. 
I've carried on that vision through my own uh, regional cricket carnivals in partnership, as I say, with Northern Territory Cricket. And that's, it's never been about myself, it's always about trying to identify the, the next Indigenous cr cricketer and provide a pathway for that person to, to get to the baggy green. I came down and I played and organised the Catherine sides for some 16 years. And um, in that time I, I worked with community sides, I'd set up community calms, in, uh, community teams from around the region, from our, our community um, regional cricket carnivals. Um, so 16 years I, I, I played and then um, after I've, the body couldn't re get around the oval anymore, I thought, well, what can I do? And I approached Northern Territory Cricket and said, uh, is there an opportunity for me to come down and, and do a bit of umpiring? So um, I took that on board and I've been coming back as an umpire for the past six years. And that sort of comes around to my, my vision with my cricket is to meet and, grew, to meet and greet new friends through a game of cr cricket. And that's what, exactly what the Imparja Cup does. Um, I, meet, I meet new people every year and uh, I catch up with old friends every year. So uh, the, the umpires group is the same. There's probably a consensus of about four guys that have come back from previous years. And it's always good to see them, but I've also met new guys. The No More Pit campaign is about uh, just raising awareness of domestic and family uh, violence uh, awareness. And uh, hopefully using cricket as a vehicle, that will help us um, get our message across, you know, that too many Indigenous women are, are dying at the hands of their partners or their former partners. Um, and through this great game, yeah, we, we seem to be get, talking to all teams about the No More, no More campaign. Uh, they've taken it on board. I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the, 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 the efforts of the uh, community sides, major centre sides taking it all on board. Um, domestic violence is well and truly alive, it is happening in, in their communities and um, by if we can get our message across uh, in some way using the Imparja Cup, um, I'm, I'm excited you. Well I'm sure you'll all agree, an incredible winner. Congratulations Marcus. Moving on to a relatively new category but one that really highlights how incredible cricket volunteers really are. And this is the Young Leader of the Year Award. This award celebrates a young person under the age of 25 who positively impacts those around them through their off-field leadership in volunteering. And we have two amazing finalists for you tonight. Over to you, Gaz, to tell us more about them. The nominees for Young Leader of the Year are Daniel Smith, from the Sorrel Cricket Club. Daniel became president and junior coordinator of his club at 23 years of age. He has a passion for growing the club in all areas, from sponsorship through to participation. And Jordan Jones from Blowfly Cricket Club. And the club president, Jordan, has a passion for connecting communities. He has helped the club to provide opportunities for people with a disability to play club cricket. And the winner is... Daniel Smith from the Sorrel Cricket Club. Daniel, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Um, yeah, massive honour. How does it feel? It's a relatively new category, but a really important one to get recognition for our young leaders. How does it feel knowing just how many wonderful young leaders there are out there, that you are our young leader of the year? Um, I think for me, like, I've... You don't really do what you do for these types of awards. You do it because you love cricket and love your club. Um, but there's so many people like me, my age, doing things um, around the club, around their clubs. Um, and um, I certainly know what it means um, for them as well. So, yeah, pretty honoured. You say that there's a lot of young leaders around doing what you do, but you're the president of the club, you're in charge of the junior programs at Sorrell Career Club, you're 23 years of age. There aren't many people who are the president and running the junior club programs, they're probably doing a few other things as well that do it as well as you. Why did you get into it? How did you get into it? Um, I think when I first got into it, the club um, was pretty, um, just gone through a few changes. Um, and then from then there, I've, I've just continued on with it. 
I'm a sucker for um, helping out and uh, making sure I, I do my bit and uh, probably go over um, what I'm meant to do. But at the end of the day, I just love it. I, I love the social side of it, talking to everyone and coming back to the, the juniors is seeing how they – progress through the cricket throughout the year is amazing to see and that's where you really get your satisfaction from it. I know you like getting things done. You've mentioned it once or twice and I'm sure you could mention it a thousand times because around a, a local club, things do just have to get done. But why do you volunteer your time around your club? What makes Sorrell Cricket Club so special to you? Um, real real good mates there. Um I've grown up with most of the people that are coming through our club with me now and, um, yeah, just a great community to be in and helping. Um, yeah, just love it. A career club, in fact, any sporting clubs made up of all age groups, all abilities, male, female, and yet here you are at 23. How do you go with some of the older stalwarts around the club when you're the president and you're just asking them to do things or getting them to help out as well? Yeah, it is, um, it is a, a challenging one at times, but also um, I've had some great mentors, um, especially being my first year as president, um, to have, have those blokes around to help me out, um, learn a, a lot over this year and um, in past positions doing the secretary's role and stuff like that. Um, it's you need, you need those people around to, to help you out and... And also it has been probably a learning curve for them because uh, bringing in new ways with technology and stuff like that that they probably never thought that could be could be done at a cricket club. What's been one or two of the biggest challenges that you've faced so far? Um, probably just the amount of workload that comes in and, and the ideas that you do get but then you figure out pretty quickly that there's not enough time to implement those ideas. Um, but we work with what we can do and um, that's yeah where we, we, we get to in the end. So where to from here? Where do you want to take the club in your role as president? Uh, continue the growth with our juniors um, and start to see them probably link through our senior sides and and if the juniors are talented enough, it'd be great to see them go on to Premier League clubs. Um, but, yeah, um, women's growth in our club is one of the ones that I'd love to tick off. Um, it's um, been a challenging one, but in our community already, um, other sports clubs are, are smashing it. So, yeah, that's yeah a few things that I'd love to see our club do. What's the best thing about Sorrell Career Club? What's the one thing that you absolutely love about your club that you're a part of? Uh, at the end of the day, no matter whether we've lost, we've won, um, we've all got our backs, we're all mates. Um, and in terms of the juniors, just seeing them um, love cricket, no matter if they've lost, got a duck or made a lot of runs just seeing the team together um, the things that yeah I like to take away at the end of the day How many hours would you put in a week during cricket season how many hours would you put in oh, probably over 10 maybe I, I don't know really never really tracked it but come on most... add them up add them up are you still playing are you still having a hit yeah still having a hit um, so most most uh, Saturday Sunday mornings I'm there opening up so if I'm not playing on the Saturday, I'm there opening up and doing stuff around the club. So, yeah, it'd be, when you think of it, it'd probably be over 15 hours. Um, I'll get you up to about 40 by the time. Training, Tuesdays, Thursdays? Yeah, 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 you're probably right. It is, yeah, Tuesday, Thursdays, an hour with the junior kids as well on a, on a Monday. So, yeah, it's... It all adds up. Well, it's inspiring for people of all ages. You are our Young Leader of the Year Award winner. Daniel, congratulations, mate. Fantastic so far. We look forward to all the things that lay ahead for you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. I'm sure the Sorrell Cricket Club are all celebrating with you tonight. And also, what an amazing national finalist in Jordan. Safe to say the future of cricket is safe in the hands of these two young legends. Congratulations. 
The next award recognises those who go above and beyond to work with the cricket community. The Community Partnership of the Year Award recognises outstanding leadership and support in building community-based partnerships that provide positive outcomes to the cricket community. Let's hear more about our two finalists, thanks to Elise. The nominees for Community Partnership of the Year are Cumberland City Council. In partnership with Cricket New South Wales, the council engaged with over 500 kids from previously unengaged schools. They also linked local cricket clubs to their school holiday programs to support ongoing participation in the region. And Kingsley Woodvale Junior Cricket Club. In partnership with Creaney Education Support Centre and North Metro TAFE, the club provided high quality experiences to kids with special needs and disabilities, whilst providing work experience opportunities for TAFE students. And the winner is... Kingsley Woodbow Junior Cricket Club. Congratulations once again to the Kingsley Woodvale Junior Career Club, who I know are celebrating over in Perth as we speak. The club runs one of the largest accredited blast centres in Western Australia and are one of Perth's only endorsed autism inclusive cricket clubs. The partnerships the club has formed ensure kids get to be part of club cricket whilst giving valuable experience for volunteers and students alike. Next up, we have the Technology and Media Initiative of the Year Award. As we move towards more online communities and operations, we introduce another new category, which recognises an individual, club or association who has used technology to create a connection to its members, whether by reducing volunteer time, connecting members through social media or enhancing participant experience. Let's see who our national finalists are. Thanks, Elise. The nominees for Technology and Media Initiative of the Year are Manly Warringah District Cricket Club. All 26 members of Manly Warringah District's social media team play different roles to help spread their club's message through online engagement. And Jared Simister and Nick Work. From Coromandel Valley Ramblers Cricket Club, Jared and Nick integrated technology initiatives across the club, demonstrating a return on investment for sponsors, COVID tracking and general community engagement. And the winner is... Jared Simister and Nick Work. Jared and Nick are active participants in both the club's on-field and off-field successes. Together, they've implemented their vision of the club being a leader in integrating technology in local cricket. Not only training and games, but sponsorship, club events, restrictions around social distancing, pandemic management, and connections with players, families, sponsors, and the community. Development of a multi-dimensional Facebook Messenger chatbot linked to the club's Facebook page has redefined processes and innovated in a challenging COVID environment. Now let's share something a little different. Has someone at your club taken a screamer lately? Let's see how they compare to our next lot of footage. Sit back and enjoy the top 10 catches from across the season.
bad at all. Let's move to our next award of the night, the Junior Cricket Initiative of the Year. This award looks to acknowledge the outstanding delivery of junior cricket experiences by finding clever and innovative ways to engage and grow their junior offering with a focus on education, fun and social connection. Let's throw to Gaz to find out who our finalists are. The nominees for the Junior Cricket Initiative of the Year are Goulburn District Junior Cricket Association. The introduction of Goulburn District's new Junior T20 competition gave kids the ability to play under lights on turf with a focus of fun and enjoyment for both players and parents. And Adelaide Nepalese Cricket Association. Bringing cultures together through cricket. The Adelaide Nepalese Cricket Association experienced growth through their junior cricket program, a free, fun and inclusive program for all. And the winner is... Stu Medcraft from the Mowbray Cricket Club. Congratulations to the Adelaide Nepalese Cricket Association. Entering just their sixth season, the association has expanded from just two teams to now include a ladies competition, junior pathway and thriving blast program and sees a sustainable, inclusive and low cost program providing anyone wanting the chance to enjoy cricket the opportunity to do so. Next up, we have the Women and Girls Initiative of the Year Award. This award looks to celebrate the outstanding delivery of female-based experiences by finding clever or innovative ways to engage and grow their program. The nominees please Elise. The nominees for Women and Girls Initiative of the Year are Geraldton Regional Cricket Board. Through strategic planning, education and awareness programs, the Geraldton Regional Cricket Board has seen their female engagement grow from four participants to over 250. And Newcastle Junior Cricket Association and Charleston Junior Cricket Club. Working together to form a subcommittee and conduct a player survey has seen customised offerings increase junior girls participation to 375. And the winner is... Newcastle Junior Cricket Association and Charleston Junior Cricket Club. Leah, congratulations. Thank you. From the Newcastle Junior Cricket Association, Charlestown Junior Cricket Club, you're involved in clubs, associations. How does it feel to be not just nominated as a finalist, but to win? Oh, look, it's great. It's, um, it's, we would never have imagined that when we set out with our um, project to get the, the girls playing cricket this year in the all-girls competition in Newcastle. It's been a, it's been a, a big year, but, um, yeah, we never imagined that we'd um, end up with this. What made you want to get involved in the female cricket space? Um, I really, I had a little bit of involvement uh, about uh, two years ago with a small team that played in a in a um, all girls um, sixes league, and it was just a you know small Friday afternoon competition, and just seeing the joy that the girls got out of cricket compared to I spent a lot of time at boys cricket, hadn't really spent any time with the girls, and it's just a completely different. Um, completely different environment and, and they're motivated by different things and they just love it. And so when when uh, the girls' cricket officer, when the next AGM came around, um, that's where I ended up. And what does it mean to you to see them run around and, and play during the week on weekends and know that your involvement has created something special and it seems to be growing exponentially every season? Yeah, look, it's so fulfilling. I think every every parent, Every adult, every um, cricket New South Wales person who's involved in, in the all girls cricket, we have just we've all gotten so much out of it. More probably more than what you know the girls get out of it. Um, just seeing seeing their their you know their growth as they uh, they connect with friend the friendships they form, um, how they improve over the season is just phenomenal. Um, and, and when you see those girls walk in and you know they don't know anyone else. Those, those girls that join without knowing anyone else but just want to play cricket, that's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very rewarding. It seems like it's more than cricket, though. It seems like there's a, a bit of a community, a, a space that's not just the actual playing of the game that you've been involved in. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we've um, we're really focusing on building that that um, that community with you know within the girls' cricket. So um, keeping it social, keeping it fun, but you know keeping it serious. You know, it's we're, put, those girls are playing real cricket. They're facing a hard ball. They're they're playing the same length pitches as as the boys, and um, it's about that that challenge for them. Um, but but they they love it. Something really unique to you that I found when I was reading the, the nomination was that you're not just focused on helping your club, but you're actually developing female cricket in the whole region and the association as well. How did that come about and, and has it been a, an easy path? Because sometimes being in club land is completely different to being involved with an association. Yeah, it is completely different. So when we first started getting involved in the junior club, um, you know, about six six to eight years ago, we went to a junior presentation and there were about you know, probably about six to eight girls in the club. And then over the years at each presentation, there seemed to be less. So we have a bit of a, there has been in our area, a bit of a drive that the girls tend to go to a club that's known for, to be, or clubs that are known to have um, all girls teams because girls want to play with other girls. So um, that was probably um, one of the big drivers in just trying to get out to the clubs and, you know, we, we, we need we need that depth of, of player across all of our clubs in our association and, and that's our biggest challenge at the moment. So we um, we found this year that the clubs that fielded all girls team were generally all teams were generally um, clubs that were new to getting girls into the club, um, whereas some of the, the other clubs tended to field their girls into the junior competition. So which is great. There are loads of girls that want to play in the junior competition, but we know um, and the Cricket Australia, you know, um, accelerating female participation, all that research shows that we need girls playing cricket with other girls in a girls competition. Um, and we're building, trying to also build, um, there's a new women's competition in Newcastle. So we're really focusing on providing that pathway for the girls from junior cricket, you know, stage one, under 10s on Saturday morning, right the way through to, you know, staying with their sport and being able to play play cricket as women. It sounds sounds like you and your sub-community, a uh, sub-community, you and your sub-committee have certainly learnt a lot over the course of, of this time as well. You've learnt that they like playing girls against other girls and being in all girls teams. Have there been other learnings along the way that have helped you to succeed? Um, probably one of the biggest learnings has been that we need a person out. We need a girls cricket officer in every club. We need an advocate for girls cricket in every single club. Um, and so that, that's our biggest focus now for the next season is getting each of the clubs in our, our, in our association to um, really take the all girls cricket seriously. Congratulations once again on your win. We now move our focus into the schoolyard with the Award for Celebrating Cricket in School Award. This award celebrates a school, ambassador or initiative that celebrates the connection between school, student and the broader cricket community. Tell us, Nath, who are our finalists for this year's award. The nominees for the Celebrating Cricket in Schools Award are Stuart Medcraft from the Mowbray Cricket Club. Through the club's school recruitment strategy, Stuart showed his commitment to creating links with the local schools to grow their junior participation. And Bay NMI Public School. Committed to creating a culture of cricket, Bay NMI Public School utilised a range of staff, delivered programs to ensure every student was able to participate no matter at their school. And the winner is Stu Medcraft from the Mowbray Cricket Club. Congratulations, Stuart. Stuart's ability to work closely with Cricket Tasmania, as well as engage club volunteers to participate in school activations, has seen the Mowbray Cricket Club thrive in the junior space, with healthy blast programs, hosting all junior level teams, as well as establish all girls teams as well. Amazing effort by Stuart and the Mowbray Career Club. With two categories left to go, we now move to look at our finalists for Community Cricket Association of the Year. This award celebrates a cricket association that actively works to create a sustainable competition that provides opportunities for everyone to have the chance to play cricket. Nathan, our finalists, please. The 
nominees for Community Cricket Association of the Year are Swan Hill District Cricket Association. Flexibility in the COVID environment allowed Swan Hill District Cricket Association to increase participation through community connection and a range of competition offerings. And Alexandra and Eastern Hills Cricket Association. Providing opportunities through a range of programs. Alexandra and Eastern Hills Cricket Association embraces new ways of working by using technology to engage with participants. And the winner is... Alexandra and Eastern Hills Cricket Association. Well done, Joe Hill's on the line. Joe, congratulations. Oh, thanks, Pete. What a thrill. Um, yeah, it's uh, great to uh, receive some recognition on behalf of our association for uh, the work that we love to do each and every week through the summer months. You know how much work goes into it. How does it feel to be the winning association? Knowing how many associations put so much time and effort in, how does it feel? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, absolutely. We we work really closely with a lot of other associations in our region. Uh, cricket is one of those sports where we've um, got some great volunteers right across the board uh, getting our sides on the park each week. And uh, particularly over the last 12 months where we've had some challenges we never thought we'd have to face, um, yeah, we've, we've come through it and uh, out the other end. I was just asking you, Joe, just around some of the challenges that you've faced over the last 12 months and with eyes wide open going into this season, can you talk us through some of the challenges for your association in particular? Yeah, so um, I had a, a couple of very sleepless nights in March last year when we were gearing up for our uh, A-grade grand final, our, our marquee event of the year, and uh, unfortunately that was one of many uh, grand finals that never got played, so there was lots of disappointment uh, from everyone involved with that, but I was really um, heartened by the fact that despite the disappointment, everyone was very understanding, supportive, um, and understood that uh, whilst cricket is a really important uh, part of our lives, um, there are much bigger things to worry about. So we uh, went away from that, uh, got some guidance and support through Cricket Australia and SACA about how we gear up for, for this current season that we just finished off. And, um, yeah, that went... Uh, pretty close to without a hitch, um, even though there were some extra challenges, some extra um, uh, burden on volunteers to make sure that the COVID management plans, the, the systems, the processes were all working well. Um, surprisingly, the biggest issue for a lot of clubs was the uh, traditional afternoon tea at the change of innings well, couldn't go ahead. Um, but uh, apart from that, we uh, were able to get out there and still enjoy um, our, our Saturdays. Yeah, the bringing your own box of barbecue shapes, it was terrible all around Australia, but that's what we had to deal with, Joe. Uh, going on to some of the positives, though, I believe the association provides opportunities for over a 1,000 participants every week, and you've enjoyed a sustained period of growth. What do you put that growth down to? Um, probably a few things. So, um, first of all, we are fortunate to have quite a progressive and forward-thinking uh, executive committee uh, that understand that... Um, the traditional ways we play cricket um, might have worked for a period of time, but we need to challenge ourselves and look at ways that we can get more people involved. So a big step for us was uh, a few years ago uh, shifting our all of our senior grade competitions to a one-day format, which did have its uh, opponents, um, but we were able to see the bigger picture, get more people involved. We found that we had lots of participants that had um, might have worked away in the mines in FIFO roles, uh, might have had... Uh, shared custody of children week on, week off, all these sort of real life things that meant that committing two weeks consecutively may not have worked for everyone. So um, we've moved into this new format. It's worked really well. We're now um, doing a lot more around uh, having uh, T20 cricket intertwined with all of that. So it's really about just trying to look at what are the, the ways we can move ahead to get the most, the most people involved. And uh, the more people you have involved, the more fun you have, the, the more things you can do, and um, that's, that's all worked really well for us. Speaking of the people you've got in, involved, the association's been working really hard in providing playing and volunteering opportunities, especially for women and girls. How are you going about this, and what have been the results, and what are some of the positives that have come out of this season? Yeah, so we, we've collaborated with our uh, neighbouring associations in uh, the uh, Murray Towns area and in the Hills Cricket Association um, to set up the Upper Fleurio Girl Strikers Cricket League, which has been uh, really successful. It's given opportunities for our, uh, our keen uh, female cricketers uh, to play in their own dedicated competition against their peers. 
uh, that's been a huge step forward and we've actually starting to see some girls come through that and um, move on to play Premier Cricket in um, the top competition in Adelaide. So that's been a, a really good collaboration. Um, off the field as well, um, our executive committee um, for, oh, I think it's been 10, 12 years now, if not more, has consistently had female representation on that committee um, and we're also seeing um, some of our clubs are, are seeing the importance of having a, a diverse and inclusive um, off-field team. So um, one of our clubs has got a, a female president uh, at the reins at, at the helm now, which is um, a really good sign that um, we're evolving, uh, we're, we're uh, getting more people involved. And because of that, we, we're getting some great ideas and, and fresh ideas on how we can um, become the, the best competition we can. Congratulations and thank you, Joe. Some amazing stuff coming out of country South Australia. Now, before we head to our final award of the night, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank not only all of our finalists, but everyone who's watching at home and importantly, all of our wonderful cricket volunteers from across the country. This season may have been one of the toughest so far and yet the cricket community has banded together to not only deliver cricket matches, but enable communities across the nation to re-engage with each other. All because of the hard work of volunteers like yourselves. So quite simply, a huge thank you. Our final award of the evening is the Community Create Club of the Year. This award recognises a create club that actively creates welcoming environments and seeks to create sustainable participation and growth through good governance, volunteer support and inclusive on-field programs. Now, there is no way we can possibly capture the unbelievable work that these two clubs do to be named a Club of the Year finalists in a short video. However, we will share a little bit about what they do and give you a brief glimpse into their nomination. Over to you, Elise. <laughs> The nominees for the Community Cricket Club of the Year are Les Chenault Cricket Club. Priding themselves on being a family-friendly club, Les Chenault offers the full cricket pathway. The club engages with local schools, provides opportunities for women and girls and offers programs for those with a disability. And Enfield United Community Cricket Club. Demonstrating a commitment to engage with local community leaders, Enfield United has sustainably increased participation across all programs. And the winner is... Leshenal Cricket Club. Adele, Angelo, congratulations. Thank you so much. We're so amazed that this has happened for us. This is, uh, has been a spin out when we learnt that we were finalists and I'm uh, spinning even quicker right now. Wow. Initially, what does it mean to you? What's the initial reaction that you have? You first. My initial reaction is, wow, um, our club has worked really hard over the last probably 20 or so years to make it a welcoming place for people to be. And um, I'm just so proud of everyone in our club community and our committee that have made this happen. And Angelo, how are you feeling? Because this is uh, a huge achievement. Oh, huge. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm spinning out. I think, uh, it's, uh, I think it's ratification for us that of, of what we're doing and, you know, we have a lot of good people who just do their bit to make it the environment that it is and uh, this, is, this is recognition for it. So it's, you know, as Adele said, this, is, this started a long time ago. It's overnight success 20, from 20 years ago. I was going to ask about what Adele said about over two decades worth of work because you've been recognised this year and I know a lot of volunteers and a lot of clubs don't do it for the recognition, but it is a long time coming. Tell us through some of the, talk us through some of the initiatives as to why that's the case. Why do you think you've been nominated firstly and then won this award this year? Well, I think that um, our club is a really very inclusive club. Um, we always look to listen to our members, um, see what's happening in our community and try to respond to 
the the things that are needed in that community. Um, for instance, we have um, a girls' program. Um, sometimes it's been a bit hard for the girls um, because trying to get interest there, so we've promoted it in ways that we're trying to get them in there by including music, um, including fun and frivolity and friendship um, in those in those uh, programs. Um, trying to look at culturally how we can encourage people from all members of society just to participate and enjoy cricket. And I think that we've been pretty successful in that in the last few years. Of course, COVID-19 was no good for anyone, but I believe that the club really supported the local families quite a bit as well. It's not just about cricket, it's about community support. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened over the last 12, 18 months? Well, um, we've had quite a few challenges. Um, I, th I think COVID was probably the least of them, to be honest, uh, in the last 12 to 18 months. But nevertheless, you know, specifically on the COVID front, we we really wanted to reduce any the, any obstacles that may be, there may be to people and kids, especially to participating uh, when, uh, with the anticipated high unemployment rates and all those, those sorts of things. So, you know, specifically we got together... Uh, cricket kits that we, cricket equipment that we hadn't used, uh, weren't being used, and we put together loan kits um, and just m made sure that th those obstacles uh, that there may have been weren't, weren't there for people to participate. Specifically on, you know, wrapping up, I, I like to coin the phrase that it's much more than about the cricket. And uh, there was a couple of families that had some uh, tragedies this year. And we've wrapped our arms around those uh, those families because, uh, but you know, they are family, and very young children are no longer uh, on on this earth, unfortunately. So uh, we've got an ongoing program now with one case in particular where we we will be having an annual event to help out a particular charity that. Um, funds research into this uh, this childhood cancer that in that particular case took that beautiful child's life. You've spoken beautifully about how you've got women and girls involved in cricket with some fun and frivolity and just making sure that they can get involved. But I also believe you're a very welcoming club. How do you open your arms to, to the community? A lot of those first time buyers or first home buyers or young families coming into the area want to be part of a, a club and a community. What sort of things or initiatives do you do to make sure that you're seen as a, a welcoming club? Um, I'll, I'll start with that. We, we have a very, very close relationship with all the schools in, in our area. Um, Basically, we at the beginning of each season or near the beginning of each season, we ensure that we are in the schools, we have a presence in the schools so that people know if they want to play cricket, they can come to the Leshnock Cricket Club. Some of those schools, we sponsor awards as another way of phys specifically phys ed awards so that we can keep the name out there. And uh, for the last few seasons, we've had an open day that we openly publicise and we um, just allow anybody to come along and experience cricket, be it, you know, the blaster format way up to whatever format. And it was it was in one of those events two seasons ago that we um, got a, a, a large influx of new women's players into our women's team. So, that, you know, it's, it's worked in different ways in each season and that's something that we'll continue to do. Sensational work. One thing is getting players, juniors to come and play, boys and girls to play cricket. But one thing that I've heard that your cricket club does really well is transitioning from the junior ranks all the, all the way through to the senior ranks as well. How do you go about that, making sure that they're not just enjoying their junior cricket, but they continue to play and continue a love for their club? I guess, um, firstly, it's opening the lines of communication. So making everyone feel welcome by communicating all facets of the club to the whole club. So rather than having a section where you've got juniors or junior blasters and master blasters and sectioning them off, we try to open the lines of communication between all of them so everyone's aware of what's going on all around the club. 
Um, also, we've looked at getting our junior cohort, um, seeing if they're ready to move along to seniors, transitioning them through that a lot better. So opening the lines of communication between the junior coaches and the senior staff um, and um, basically getting those kids into senior teams before they finish the juniors. A lot of hard work goes into that. You've had a little bit of time now to let it soak in that you are the Community Cricket Club of the Year. How does it feel as a an overall, an overarching feeling? How does it feel to know amongst all the wonderful clubs that play this great game of cricket that we love in Australia, how does it feel to be named the Community Cricket Club of the Year? Well, it's an amazing honour. It's actually quite humbling to think of all the cricket clubs in Australia, that our little club yep. is yep. the one that's been decided to be the cricket club of the year. I mean, really, I think it all goes back to, as I said before, the wonderful people that are behind the scenes doing the work, um, the connection we have with each other and the pride that we have in our club and um and just being open to all people in the community, um, it just makes it such a pleasure for us as committee members to participate in. Um, you get a lot of intrinsic motivation to do it because these people are just so grateful for being able to get out there and enjoy life, um, especially in these times that we have at the moment. Um just to be out there in the open and playing and for it to be organised and just make fun, fun of everything rather than being solely competitive. Um, it's more about participation and, and being part of a group. I honestly cannot think of the superlative of how I feel. Incredible doesn't cut it. Um, unbelievable doesn't cut it. So I'm going to have to dive into the thesaurus later on to see if I can get a word, but... Just to think of all the clubs, cricket clubs that there are in this beautiful big country of ours that loves this sport so much and it is, you know, this, the sport across the whole country, which is another thing, uh, it's just, uh, it's a spin out. Well, Adele, Angelo, Lesson Cricket Club is our Community Cricket Club of the Year. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, very, very much appreciated. And what a great thing for Les Chenault Cricket Club. What a great honour. Absolutely fantastic honour. Thank you. Congratulations, Angelo, Adele and the Les Chenault Cricket Club. I'm sure we have only scraped the surface of what is an incredible club in country Western Australia. Now that's a wrap for our 2020-2021 Community Cricket Awards. Congratulations once again to not only our winners tonight, but to all of our finalists. And thank you to everyone who's watching at home or at your cricket clubs. We will see you all next year for another incredible season of cricket. Thank you and good night. I'd like to personally thank all the volunteers across the country for all your work in a pretty challenging year for everyone. So enjoy your night, stay safe and take care. Congratulations to all of tonight's winners. In what was a challenging year, I just wanted to say a really big thank you to everyone at the grassroots level who helps this season get underway. So again, congratulations and I hope you have a great night.